Well, hello and welcome to After the Sermon, a Bethany podcast where we have the privilege of digging deeper into our Sunday messages. I am Tammy DeLau, and today I'm joined with just you. Just me. Just you, Pastor Steve Musto. Mm. So this is kind of a big deal Sunday. We are coming to the end of a series. So this yeah. is the last one on Ephesians. Yeah. I always feel a little sad, but you are always ready to jump into the next thing. I am. I love change. Okay, you so do. So I get excited about change. I'm kind of the person who decorates the house and the chairs just stay sitting. So yeah, yeah okay. It just shows the difference. Yeah, the but I, I do, I really enjoyed this series yes. and some books you're ready to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ephesians, mm-hmm. I can keep going. Yep. So. It's really good. Yeah. So, all right. I'm going to just go ahead and read yeah. and we will jump in talking. So you are going to be doing Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. You are going to preach on the all to the end, but I'm just going to read till 20 today. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heaven. For this reason... Take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand, stand therefore with truth, like a belt around your waist, righteousness, like armor on your chest and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith, which you can, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for the saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it as I should. There you go. Yep. And then he gives the the closing remarks and uh, I'm so glad you didn't have me read the next one because I'm yeah. not even sure how to say that. Oh, Tychicus, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's a name. Yeah. Probably not on the top of the baby name book. Right no, now, so. no, no. And he was the guy who would have read the letter. Mm-hmm. So he had to pronounce everything. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Every week I'm like, oh, I didn't practice enough. You know, as I stumble <laughs> over the words. Um, all right. So we're jumping into this. We yeah. know armor of God. There's been many studies done over the years. I know the women here specifically have loved the Priscilla Schreier study. I've not done that one. So, oh. so I'm curious. Um, but I know one of the things that you're, you're going to touch. And so let's do this just a tiny bit is oftentimes we read God's word. We have preconceived notions yeah. and we're pretty sure we know what's happening. And so yeah. you're going to challenge us a little bit this Sunday on that. Yeah. And I, it's not a bad challenge. It's just, we've all grown up. Those of us who grew up in church mm-hmm. and this is a really popular passage. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've grown up with the notion that this is, you know, Paul's in prison mm-hmm. and that he's looking at a Roman soldier and he comes up with this brilliant Right. idea, this, this word picture of, Oh, it's like armor. Mm -hmm. And, and based on Roman soldiers, he, you know, writes all this down and that's, it's not quite true. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not wrong, but there's more, right? Yeah. I, well, it's not wrong because it would have been accessible to people. Mm -hmm. Um, But the reality is uh, twofold. One is you didn't want to see Roman soldiers Uh, in Ephesus. There wouldn't have been Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. They they were few and far between. And if they, they were, were there, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't good. No, mm-hmm. you didn't want them in your city. It meant something was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, they stayed out of cities on purpose. And especially Ephesus was very loyal uh, to Rome. So it was only in places. They would only send soldiers to places that were like hotbeds. So think about it this way. This just tells you what Jerusalem was like. When Herod built the new temple, the Solomon's temple had been destroyed. So he built a new temple. It was bigger than Solomon's temple. The Jews were all excited that he had done this. This was a great thing. He really did it as a way of trying to keep, to curry favor. Okay. But at the far side of the temple grounds was a barracks for Roman soldiers. Oh, wow. And there were probably at least 120 soldiers that, that lived there mm-hmm. right next to the temple there's a reason why. And it's because things were chaotic in Jerusalem. 
and it was known as a place that rebelled. So in Ephesus, you didn't have that. You didn't, you didn't want soldiers to be there. You didn't want uh, to see them. And they would have been familiar with this, but this is not the armor. Um, Roman armor is not what Paul is thinking about. Okay. What he's thinking about is something that goes back into Jewish history. Okay. Now the Ephesians wouldn't have known this most likely because most of them are Gentiles, We're Gentile, yes. but this goes back to Isaiah chapter 59. Okay. And um, Isaiah is the book where we are learning that the, the people of Israel are, have been rebellious. Mm -hmm. People of Israel and Judah have been rebellious. They are going to go into exile. And uh, Isaiah paints this picture of them, the way God is evaluating them and judging them. And so he says in Isaiah 59, the, the Lord's arm, he, as he looks at the people, uh, no one makes claims justly. No one pleads honestly. They hatch vipers eggs. They've not known the path of peace. Justice is far from them. He's doing this whole thing where he's, it's like God is looking at and evaluating his people. And what he finds is that no one cares that there's injustice. Mm. And so what he ends up saying um, in verse 15 of Isaiah 59, the Lord saw that there was no justice and he was offended. He saw that there was no man. He was amazed. There was no one interceding. Mm. So his own arm brought salvation and his own righteousness supported it. So then what does he do? He put on righteousness as body armor and a mm. helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing. He wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. And then if you, uh, you read Isaiah, you're going to find the elements. Mm -hmm. the, the gospel of peace yeah. is talked about. Uh, in Isaiah and uh, the belt of truth is talked about in Isaiah. And these are all things that God uh, puts on or that he furnishes. So that's what's in Paul's mind as he's talking about this. So I've taught this before mm -hmm. and I have, I had this little cartoon picture of a Roman soldier that I would put up and say, well, see, here's the armor and here's what, and um, you know, as we grow in Christ, mm -hmm we grow in our understanding of the Bible right. and I've come to understand um, that that's, this is not an accurate picture. Right. The Roman soldier is not the accurate picture. Okay. Even theologically think about it for a second. We really don't want Roman armor. Mm -hmm. If we're fighting, he says our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's right. principalities and power. So if God's going to give you armor or, you know, some guy is going to give you armor. Wouldn't you rather have God's armor? Right. That's the point. If you're fighting a spiritual being like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or if that's what's attacking you. Yeah. So, um, it's so interesting. I know I am doing a read through the Bible, um, this year and there is a little prayer that they have us pray before we dive in. Mm. Um, and one of them, the, it says, God, correct any lies I believe about you or anything I misunderstand. Mm. And that's been very humbling for me as uh, as I've grown in the Lord, because I think you hear it once and you hear it over and you hear it over again. And you're like, well, that's gospel truth. And yeah. um, not that seeing an ar armor necessarily is wrong, but there's just more to the picture. We're missing yeah. something. Yeah. So. It's, it's, um, mm -hmm. it gives a, a different yep. depth. I don't think it's going to lead anybody astray. It doesn't right. have anything to do with salvation. Right. It's not heretical necessarily, but yeah. Yeah. It just brings the picture into clear focus. Yep. Like, well, wait a second, this is God's armor. Mm -hmm. This is not somebody else's armor. I mean, I blew it as a mom because I didn't want my kids to be Ninja Turtles. So I gave them, you know, from CBD, God's the, armor. The like armor of God. I gave them the right. armor of God. And yeah. we sang, I may never march in the infantry, you know, <laughs> so sorry, kids. I could have done yeah. better. So, yeah. yeah. So that's good. Mm. All right. I mean, I look at that verse 10 and it just almost feels like a, a mic drop moment. And it, cause it says, finally be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Right. That's so good. Yeah. You and know? that's, kind of the point. That's the summary. Right. And um, Paul has already said this. I think it's back in, in four, he is, he's already essentially said what he's, what he's telling us here um, to, to live in righteousness. But um, yeah, 
Walk worthy of the calling you've received with all humility and gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort. So he does this, this whole thing and he talks about, um, he, he talks about how we are to live in righteousness with God. It's essentially the same, mm-hmm. the same command. Mm-hmm. So we see, we see the phrase heavenly realms in mm-hmm. here. What does that even mean, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> Help me out. Yeah. So, um, We have a concept in our world when we talk about heaven, Mm -hmm. we're talking about a good positive place Mm -hmm. where God lives and is thrown Mm -hmm. in streets of gold and right. Yeah. The whole thing. Maybe pearly gates too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe (laughs) pearly gates. I mean, you know, there's the whole deal. Mm -hmm. So that concept of being, uh, what was the, uh, the sitcom that was out recently is called Ooh, the, good, the place. good place. Yeah. Did so it's a watch, good place. Did you actually watch? I didn't watch it. No, I actually did. Okay. <laughs> so, was it any good? I did like it. Yes. Okay. So, but not biblical, but yes. Okay. It's so <laughs> it's uh, what, what a shocker. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The Hollywood mm-hmm. didn't crank out something biblical, um, but it is a good place. Uh, so we talk about heaven. That's the deal. Mm-hmm. We even talk about it in terms of heaven. Are you going to heaven? Or are you going to hell? It's its own place. And I think, the easiest way to understand this is um, their concept would have been spiritual. Okay. Heavenly realms is just the spiritual world. Okay. It doesn't mean that there's a battles going on in heaven, like l- literal heaven as a place. It's just kind of in the spirit world, okay. which goes to Paul's point here that this is a spiritual battle. Okay. So hearkening back to, for those who've been in the church for a little while, we did a message not long ago where we talked about, um, I used two tablecloths, put the white tablecloth yes, down that was so good. or the black tablecloth down and then the white tablecloth on top of it, that the black tablecloth pokes through. I, the noise that you made every Boop. time. Yep. That yep. was, yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Once in a while it just pokes through and that's, that's what Paul's saying. This okay. is, it, yeah, it comes. So our battle, mm-hmm. we have to be ready for not just what's going on here, mm-hmm. but going on in the unseen Okay. world. And that's the principalities and powers. And, mm-hmm. um, years ago I saw, um, yeah, somebody tried to make a case for, well, Paul's talking about different, um, like different ranks spiritually here. He, he says our battle is not against flesh and blood, mm-hmm. but it's against principalities. It's against powers. Mm-hmm. And here, these are three different things. Paul's like, no, I, I don't, I, that's probably a little too literal. Okay. Um, Paul is, Paul is saying that it, it, our, our battle is not just okay. with what we see. Mm-hmm. It's with what we don't see mm-hmm. and trying to draw a conclusion about ranks of evil you know, from this passage or whatever is just, there, there are other passages that might support that. This is not that one. one did, okay. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, one, another question I have for you is, are we doing battle with, with demons? Is that what this is talking about? Mm. Tricky. Mm-hmm. This is, this is a tricky question because in a sense, yes, yep. uh, we are. And, um, yeah, we're told stand, stand, stand. Right. So- and that's what we miss about the armor. And this is what I'm in the Lord's army misses too. Although it was so fun. It was so fun to <laughs> yes. sing. There were hand motions. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, we did sir. the whole thing. Flying over the enemy. I mean, it was good. Man, I, <laughs> so. I, I enjoyed singing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we miss is that the armor is, what is, what is, what is Paul say? So if, if you're being given armor, when David is given Saul's armor. Which was too heavy and he didn't even use because he didn't know what to do with it. What, so. Why was he given, was he given Saul's armor because he was supposed to just stand there? No, he was given Saul, Saul's armor to go out and face Goliath. He was going to fight. Mm-hmm. Paul says, put on the armor of God for a reason and it's not to fight. No. You see the word stand a lot. It's to stand. Mm -hmm. After you do everything, stand. Mm -hmm. If you look at the New Testament, no gospel writer Mm -hmm. tells us to take on the devil. Right. Nobody does. We can't. 
<laughs> we're not we're not powerful enough to take on the we devil. We would lose. We would lose every time. Mm-hmm. We don't go look picking fights. We don't go looking for the devil. We stand. Mm-hmm. So the darts come at, if stuff comes at us we have what it takes to extinguish it and move forward god fights god's the one who fights so the verse in the old testament that, that says the battle is the lord's is yeah the battle is the lord's yeah okay. so this is this is all defensive stuff and even the the sword is, Which I think I've been taught that's the only offensive weapon. Yeah, and I mean, in a sense, it uh, it it literally is. Yes, um, we might be over doing that just a little bit, okay. and and it doesn't mean the Bible. That's not the word that he uses. Is the Bible? There is no Bible. I mean, when Paul's uh, it, he there's a word for the Hebrew scriptures for the law. He doesn't use that word. He uses. God, the word, the evangelion, good news. Mm. It's the gospel message of what Jesus did on the cross. Okay. That's what we wield is the you, gospel message. And you only know that if you study the Greek and look at what that word originally. We, well, no, we, but it tells us, it does say um, the sword, I think are at least in the CSB. Um, Which is the word of the God. The word of God. Oh yeah. And the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Yeah. So it does use. I'm going to peek at at other translations. Yeah. You should pray at all times Mm -hmm. in the spirit. So now here's the other, here's the other piece that we can't miss because we stop at the, at the helmet, right. Or at the, uh, at the sword. So we take the helmet of salvation. uh, Great. And then we do the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then everybody preaches this. We kind of stand for closing prayer. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that 17, what we show in our Bibles and in, in English, um, is that 17 and 18 are separate verses. Right. And there's a period yep. that stops verse 17. So it reads, take the of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, period. Verse 18, pray at all times in the spirit. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's actually supposed to read, um, take the element of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer. So you use the helmet of salvation and the gospel message to pray, mm-hmm. to request, be alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Mm-hmm. That's what it's used for. It's not used to hack the devil. Okay. It's th- th- these things are used for prayer. Okay. And so uh, that gives it just a slightly different, mm-hmm. different take. So we're seeing stand and we're seeing mm-hmm. pray. We know those are what we're commanded to do. From yeah. The, okay. Yeah. To take your stand. Stay, so at the end of verse 13, um, 13 says, you may be able to resist mm-hmm. in the evil day and having been prepared uh, everything to take your stand mm-hmm. and verse 14 stand therefore with truth. Don't fight. You stand. stand. God fights. We stand, we endure and, um, and we move forward. So okay. we're going to illustrate that this weekend. No, I can't well. wait. To, I mean, yeah. I don't think tell it's going to be, tell. I won't, yeah, yeah. but I think it's going to be better than the table class. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, so, we'll see. so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that's right. Oh, um, I think I have one more question for you. Well, and maybe we've done it talking about the prayer in 18 and, yeah. and how we should read it. So we did do that. Yeah. So I am excited that we're going to do something else because it's Christmas. Yeah. Our next series is entitled. Yeah. Hark. Hark. Okay. Yes. All right. So we're doing four weeks on um, basically angelic and or supernatural messages. There are, there are several in the Christmas story. Mm-hmm. Um, there are angelic messengers Mm -hmm. and we're going to look at each one of these messages and what they say to us. And so next week we'll start with Zachariah, Zachariah, who's a priest and he goes to the temple and an angel appears to him. And this angel is very specific, a very specific angel who appears to him and says his name. And we know this guy because we've met him before. Mm -hmm. And he's going to appear to someone else in the Christmas story as well. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So we're going to talk about the angel appears to Mary. We're going to talk about an angel appearing to Joseph. Mm. And then we're going to talk about uh, two sets of dreams. Okay. One that the Magi have and one that Joseph has. This is right after um, uh, Jesus is born. Okay. And then finally, we're going to talk about, for Christmas Eve, we're going to talk about the big angel appearance, which is glory to God in the highest, to, uh, appearing okay. to the, the shepherds. shepherds. Oh, that's so, going to be so good. Yeah. Um, I, ha- I cannot wait to see what our Josh is going to do with a bumper. I, oh, yeah. Um, one has been so amazing for me, just... You, I don't know if any of us will forget that Ephesians about is about one and just seeing those faces pop up of our brothers and sisters here and different ages and coming from different, you know, different lives and, and we're one. And so that's been such a beautiful thing. I feel like his bumpers almost minister, sorry, Steve, almost ministered to me as much as your service. I agree. And you know, you know what it does for us? Mm -hmm. It makes it so that when you teach, you don't have to explain anything. Mm -mm. Because it's just given the background. It recaps it every week, yeah. And you just get up and go, oh, that's where we were. And so, yeah, Yeah. just praise God for the different gifts that he brings to the body. So if people want to read ahead this week, you are going to be in Luke Mm -hmm. 1 next week? Uh, Yeah, yeah, you can read really Luke 1, Luke 2, and then um, Matthew. So Luke and Matthew are the ones who have... Okay. the accounts of uh, of Jesus and okay. the story surrounding. And we, we kind of combine those two to get a clearer picture of what happened. Well, I'm excited. This is going to be a fun weekend. We're doing baptisms. And yeah. So right, it's going to be a great month. Thank you yeah. for today. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.